I want to make this video to show people exactly how to use the new O1 preview model outside of OpenAI. Now the reason I want to do this is if you actually go on ChatGPT and you select the O1 preview model, it actually has some problems in the front end. And one of the big problems, especially with coding, is that it takes such a long time to think that it times out and it actually doesn't give you the response. All it does is all of the thinking and then it doesn't continue. And then making it continue and making it write out the entire script is impossible because every time if, if you then say, please write out the entire script in full, then it just spends 60 seconds thinking again and it times out. Now for me personally, this isn't an issue and I'll tell you why. I have access to the model inside OpenAI. However, this actually requires you to spend $1,000 with OpenAI, which obviously is just not realistic for certain people. So instead, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using something called OpenRouter. Now, OpenRouter is something that I literally learned about yesterday, and it's going to completely revolutionize everything that I'm doing, including for Harbor. If you don't know what Harbor is, harborseo.ai, it's my SaaS that I made. It's an SEO content generator, also a keyword tool, and very soon to also be a backlink assistant. This thing is incredibly powerful, and I'm going to be experimenting with which models I can put inside now I know about OpenRouter. However, let's talk a little bit about OpenRouter. The first thing you want to do on openrouter.ai is you want to go to credits, and you want to add about $10, okay? So just press add credits, go through the system, blah, blah, blah. Add $10, add $5, add whatever the fuck you want. Then click on keys, create a new key, call it whatever the hell you want again, and press the copy button here. And then you want to put this in a document like that. That is your secret key, okay? Then you want to go to search models and search for O1 preview. You can also use O1 mini. So if we actually go on O1 mini, it might actually be cheaper. It is actually cheaper. It's $3 per million input tokens and $12 uh, dollars, uh, per million output tokens. So actually, it will probably be worth using OpenAI uh, O1 Mini. But just for this video, we're going to be using O1 Preview just because that's the more famous one and that's what people are using. So from here, all you have to do is just press API on the right. And then we're going to use Python. I just prefer Python. You can use whatever the hell you want. Uh, and I'm going to click Python and just press copy here. Now, there's no external library, okay? It's literally just using requests and JSON, which is actually pretty cool, uh, considering most of the time people use third-party API libraries. So we'll paste this here, okay? And then I'm gonna press a few enters, and I've got a little prompt here. It's nothing special, but basically it just says, um, well, actually, before we do that, let's just say I want to chat with this in my terminal. Can you make the terminal response print? Uh, and also, also add my secret key and remove uh, the two optional settings, okay? I'm probably not gonna put this on GitHub, guys. I just want you to follow my exact process here. If you don't know what you're doing with code, you need to learn to a certain extent a small amount of things, okay? Uh, it hasn't actually given me, it hasn't put my uh, secret key, but that's fine. So we'll go here, we'll just do CLS to clear the terminal. Um, you want to open a new folder, so open, just press open folder, right click, new folder, call it what you want, okay? And then we'll select the folder here, and then yes, I trust, and then terminal, new terminal. And then you just want to right click here, new file, hi.py, call it whatever you want, and then just paste, okay? And then we're going to grab our secret key, and we'll put that here where it says your secret key here. And then we'll do python hi.py. Now, what you can do is you can change this prompt to whatever you want, and then if we run this, you'll see that you are now talking with... When did I say remove the model name, mate? Why would it do that? I hate Claude sometimes. At what point did I say remove the model name? Honestly, it's not that difficult, is it? To follow instructions. God damn AI, dude. 
So I don't know what uh, it just used. I'll use Meta Llama uh, uh, instruct, that's fine. So we'll do uh, python high.py again, this time using the correct model that I wanted to use in the first place. And we should see now that it'll say uh, which one it actually used. Now, think about this logically. This has Quen, this has OpenAI01 uh, Preview. It has many, many models on it. So you can literally now talk with any model without buying an expensive laptop um, or a computer or whatever it might be. This is actually a game changer, guys. It makes things so easy. So you can see provider, open AI, model, O1 preview. You have just successfully had your first conversation outside of uh, ChatGPT with O1 preview. So let's just change this up a bit. Now I wanna say, uh, I wanna make a um, chat window using Flask and index.html so I can have a conversation that flows with this chatbot bonus points if you can format the code inside code boxes and also format the markdown that the response is normally given in from the model. So we'll press enter here. Certainly, I'll create a Flask application with an HTML interface that allows you to have a conversation with blah, 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 blah. And that will create both an HTML file and a um, Python file. That's how Flask works, if you're unaware. It's a very, very simple system. Very good for local things, not so good for applications, as far as I know. So, oh, don't be like that. Gracias. So we'll do this one step at a time. So we'll just press copy here. And this should be the Python file. Make sure that your, uh, you, you do your secret key straight away, otherwise, you know, you'll, you'll fall over in a minute. Not fall over. You'll get confused in a minute. So we'll press save here. We'll press here and we'll press copy, but I'm just gonna follow the instructions, okay? This is something that people um, get tripped up with a lot. So create a folder named templates, okay? So folder, templates. Inside, uh, save the HTML code in a file, index it inside the template. So press new file, index.html, paste the HTML and then press save. Replace your secret key in app.py Install the required Python packages. So pip install flask requests markdown. And then we run the application. So I just need to close this quickly and open Visual Studio Code. I just need to run it as administrator because I don't want to use a VM for right now. So we'll just open this again. And then we'll do uh, what I just did before. This should work. Okay, it did, perfect. Now we do python high.py. And we'll open this up. And you can see it says get 200, which means it's worked. Beautiful. So let's give this a test, okay? Remember what model we're talking with. I want you to recreate the snake game as closely as possible to the original snake game. Walls should not count as collision, only colliding with yourself. Also, don't forget the strawberries. Okay, because every single, oh, I pressed enter then and it worked, which uh, it wasn't previously. Every single snake game I've ever created doesn't have strawberries and uh, at least in the snake that I used to play, the walls didn't, didn't count as collision. You used to be able to go through the walls and appear on the other side, but for some reason, every single time I make um, a snake game, that's not the case. So maybe my memory is just bad or I think the original Nokia version, you could go through walls, but Okay, so this is really, really cool. Look at this, guys. This is already formatted in a code box and with, um, uh, with, with Markdown, okay? Look how cool that is. We've basically recreated ChatGBT in 10 minutes, if you think about it. Um, now, as far as I know, there shouldn't be any uh, timeout issues or anything. Um, would there be any timeout issues with this setup or could the model think for a while, like five minutes, and respond for a long time too. I'm just curious if there's any kind of timeout issues. Okay, so it could, client side timeout. By default, most browsers have a default uh, request of 300 seconds, but it can vary server side timeout, flash development server. Doesn't have a specific timeout, but when deployed, servers like whatever, might have timeouts, proxy, blah, 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 to handle these potential issues. So as far as I know, there shouldn't be any issues, but you could probably um, further this by ensuring there are no issues by following um, what Claude says there. 
But let's just try this out. So snake game.py, paste this, and then we'll quit out of here. And we'll do python snake game.py. Oh, strawberry PNG not found. So strawberry PNG. Um, I mean, yeah, sure. It's a JPEG. Uh, how do I get? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Uh, that's how they get you. Whatever, I'm just gonna have a JPEG. I don't care. I'm not trying to make the perfect snake game here. I'm just trying to see that this works. So we'll right click, uh, copy relative path, and then we'll look for strawberry. I'll put that here, and then we'll run that. There we go, and there's the strawberry. Oh, that's not what I meant, but still, it works. <laughs> Let's see if we can go through walls. Oh, amazing. Okay, so, I mean, it works. That wasn't what I meant by strawberry. I meant that it was supposed to be a randomly appearing strawberry that would make the snake grow more. However, I think this is still really, really cool. Oh, oh yeah, okay, we just restarted, nice. Yeah, okay, amazing. So now you have the ability to talk with uh, the new model inside your own um, framework without any timeout issues, without any of that, and you will probably always get a response. Now, you do need to obviously test this. You need to make sure that there are no timeout issues. Claude says there may be timeout issues, but I'm sure there are ways around uh, these issues. But yeah, that's going to be it, guys. I really enjoyed making this video, actually. It was super, super fun. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend, and I will see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out. You want to watch this video if you have been following our AI SEO case studies and you want to see the latest progress on supplies for hunting.